through these that we pray. Bow your heads as I go into prayer. Father God, you are good and you are mighty and you are wonderful. You are mighty to be praised. We thank you for coming down today. Your fire, Lord God, is in this place. Your spirit is in this place. Your glory is here. God, we stand in awe. We stand in amazement because you are here. Our God, Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Yahweh is here. So God, at this moment, we prepare our hearts for whatever you have to say to us. Lord God, as your man of God, as a man of God comes up, Lord God, bring him down. Bring down his thoughts, his agenda, Lord God, his mindsets, Lord God, his problems, bring them down. Decrease as you increase so that you can speak, Father. Because when you speak, Lord God, all the earth, all the universe, they have to bow down to you, Lord God. The winds and the waves, they obey you. You speak and they are still. Lord God, so every chaotic place in our hearts, every chaotic place, every storm that's waging on in our lives, Lord God, as you speak tonight, calm down. Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? His name is Jesus. His name is healer. His name is God, the great I am. There is none like you. You are Yahweh, Jesus. So here we are, attentive to what you have to say to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. L'église n'a pas compris nous à ce moment-là. Nous sentons Jésus en fret. Est-ce que nous fret? Si nous voulons qu'à monter là pour nous, est-ce que est-ce que nous là? Ok, on va me dire ça encore. Alléluia, alléluia. How many people here came to praise and worship the Lord tonight? How many people feel His presence here right now? Can we stand to our feet and give God some praise? Can we thank Him for all He's done? If we're here right now, it's all because of Him. Amen. If we're here right now, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. C'est bon Dieu fidèle. C'est bon Dieu réel. Bon Dieu sans pareil. Bon Dieu sans pareil. Hallelujah. Give God your own worship. Give God your own praise. Give him your best. Give him your all. Give him your everything. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You got to this one, he turned it for good. He turned it for good. Has God done that for you? Amen? You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turned it for good in my life. You turned it. Start turning around. Start turning like this. Say, you take. You take what the enemy meant. He turned it. He turned it for good. Keep going. Keep going. He turned it for good. You take what the enemy meant. You take what the enemy He turned it. Amen. Turned it. What the enemy was trying to destroy you with. He turned it for good. What the enemy was trying to kill you with. He take what the enemy. Tell your neighbor. He worked it for good. So he shall be no. Turned it. See what I said. What I said. He took what the enemy meant for evil. He took what the enemy. He turned it. And he turned it for good. He turned it for good. What the enemy was trying to destroy you with. You took what the enemy he turned it, and he turned it for good. He turned it for good. One last time. You take what the enemy and he turned it. Turned it. He turned it for good. Isn't God good? Amen. Tell your neighbor he turned it. Amen. 
turned it for me. Amen. He's still turning it. Amen. Amen. You might not understand, but he's still working. Amen. You might not get it, but he's still moving. Amen. 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 There's a God good. Amen. Say that with some confidence. He's turning it for my good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you for being in this place. Thank you for being good. Thank you for working in our favor. Yes, God. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 You may all be seated. Écoute, nous avons senti nous parce qu'avant nous tenions Fred, nous mettions nous non dans microwave, nous chauffions nous entre cas, le gros point moins. Qu'on y a, au fait, fini further ado. I want to call up a man that is, you know, near and dear to me, my brother from another me- mother, <laughs> the one and only, the bishop, the archbishop. Skywalk, Daniel Victor, I don't know. <laughs> can, can we praise God for the word that we're about to receive? Praise the Lord, somebody. God is good and all the time. Now, could you put your hands for Jesus in this place? I said for Jesus. Put your hands for Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. How many of you guys are happy to see another decade? Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to first start off by saying um, thank you to uh, Pastor Daniel for allowing me to minister um, on his pulpit for this evening. Also, i uh, give a big shout out to the First Haitian Church of God of Roselle. I said it right? I said it right? Yeah. Also, for um, First Haitian Church of God of Trenton that's in the building. Uh, we are happy to be with you guys upon this evening. And I just found out that on this evening is a special day, a special evening, because it's somebody's birthday. Could you just celebrate my brother Torendi in this place? You thought I didn't know. You thought I forgot. Mably no. Be quiet, catch me. Praise the, hey, catch me. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I send you greetings from Bishop Joseph Nonsense. Um, it is a pleasure and honor to always fellowship with you guys. Uh, Rosa Church of God, I love you guys. Thank you guys for having me once again. This is like, what, number six, number seven? We lost count, but we just keep fellowship with one another. And what I can tell you is that from the discipline, from the leadership and the guidance of Pastor Daniel, this is the reason why you guys can tap into the anointing the way that you guys do. So put your hands together one more time for the shepherd of this house. We have to learn how to celebrate our leaders, amen? Amen, amen, and amen. All right, without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Um, we find our scripture in Matthew 26, verses 6 to 13, and you guys may be seated for the word of God, and I know that it has already been read, but if I could just go into it real quickly, is that okay? All right, I guess it's okay. So I'm going to be reading from the NLT version, and it says, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. Verse 13, I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered 
and discuss. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask that you may come into this place right now, Lord, even more than ever. I ask that you may move expressively into this place, that you may lower me, that it may be none of me and all of you, God. I'm praying, oh, Heavenly Father, that you know your people better than I do. So, Lord, give them a word, Lord. Give them instructions, oh, Heavenly Father. Give them guidance. Give them a word of encouragement, a word of admonishment, a word, oh, Heavenly Father, that's going to allow them to draw closer unto you. We thank you, Lord, as we pray all these things in the matchless, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God said, and the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. So on this evening, I want to talk to you really quickly. My sermon title is The Fragrance of Reckless Love. I'm going to say that one more time. It's the fragrance of reckless love. Now, when you think about fragrance, you think about what it associates with scent, aroma, smell. When you encounter somebody that smokes cigarettes, even from far away, you can smell the cigarette smoke on him, right? An individual that drinks a lot on their breath, you can smell the alcohol, the liquor on their breath, correct? Now, what about for those that have their wives or their grandmothers or their mothers cooking in the kitchen? And you walk in for literally two seconds and your entire day is ruined. Why? Because when you go to work, when you go to school, or or when you go to church, you smell like those spices. Two seconds, Lee. That's all it takes. Now, if it only takes two seconds to walk into the kitchen to smell like the aroma, to smell like those spices, what about us that spend time with God? Shouldn't we smell like Jesus? Amen. Now, when we talk about the reckless love, we know that God has reckless love for his people, that he sent his only begotten son, that that he left the 99 just for that one, and that one was you and I. So we know about God's reckless love, but my question is, do you have reckless love for God? So once again, the title is The Fragrance of Reckless Love, and I want to talk about a woman, or I want to talk about some women in the Bible that had that fragrance. Before I can even start there, I just want to let you know that the leading priests and the elders, they were plotting to capture and to kill Jesus. But since it was a time for the celebration of Passover, they chose not to enact their plan. Do you guys know why? Because they did not want to cause a riot. Do you guys remember what Passover celebration was, what it signified? When the people of Israel were in Egypt, during the plagues, God instructed Moses to tell the people to take the blood of the lamb and put it over their doorposts. You know why? Because when the spirit of death would come, the Bible says that when the spirit of death will come, that it would not cross over. When the spirit of death will come, it would not walk over. But when the spirit of death came, it would literally pass over them. Somebody needs to make some noise right now for Jesus because of the blood that was spilled, the blood that is covering us, because when we should have died in our sins, his blood cover us. And for those that have accepted Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, we know that now we have eternal life with him. We shall no longer fear death. Death, where is your sting? We can't fear death because it's the only way for us to get to heaven. Amen? So now we're talking about, I am keep on saying this throughout the entire evening, a woman or women that had reckless love for Jesus. Matthew, Mark, and Luke tells us that it was two days before the Passover, and Jesus was at the house of Simon the leper, or the translation says Simon the Pharisee. Now, researchers and theologians, they argue that this Simon was the same person. But can I just let you know something? That in the days of old, they would refer to you towards your past afflictions, even though you've been healed. Amen? John tells us that Jesus was at the house of Lazarus. After resurrecting him from the dead, 
six days before the Passover. So John says it has been six days before the Passover. However, Matthew, Mark, and Luke tells us that it was two days before the Passover. Now, Matthew, Mark, and John states that this event took place in Bethany, while Luke states that this event took place in Galilee. Matthew, Mark tells us that the woman poured the alabaster jar over his head. However, Luke and John states that she poured the alabaster jar over his feet. Luke states that the immoral woman weeped at his feet, wiped it with his hair, and kissed his, kissed his feet affectionately and anointed them. John tells us that this woman, her name was Mary. Now this is the same Mary that when Martha was preparing a meal for Jesus, that as Jesus was preparing, as uh, Martha was preparing this meal, Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, entertaining him, ready for this, spending time with him. And can I just let somebody know something right now, that there is a time to serve and there is a season to sit. My question to you is what time or what season are you in right now? Is it time to serve or is it your season to sit? And the reason why I say that is because a lot of us, whether we may realize it or not, we have enrolled into the walking ministry. Nobody gave us this title. We just simply walked into it. And the walking ministry, you see an individual throughout the church, throughout the event, always getting up, walking up and down. Pastor Daniel, where are they going? I don't know. Pastor Daniel, where are they going? They don't even know. But they're always just walking, walking and walking. I guess nobody made any noise. You guys are all part of the walking ministry, huh? Either you're a part of the walking ministry or you're a part of the find something to do ministry. There's individuals that can't sit still for at least maybe five or six seconds in the church. They got to get up and find something to do. Watch this. I am not making this up. During service, I, I was watching this with my wife. This individual gets up and she goes on the stage to fix the flowers. She fixed it just like this. Now, remind you, the camera is over here. The screen is up here. So it's not obstructing anybody's view. There are always people that always have to find something to do. They just cannot sit down. For those that are laughing, you guys are a part of that ministry too, huh? But can I just let you know something? There's a danger to that. Because when the Holy Spirit is strong and mighty, you will have no idea what to do. Do you know why? Because you're so focused with the itinerary of the church that you have no intimacy with Christ. So the more powerful the manifestation comes from a deep relationship with Christ. But the only way you're going to receive that is if you learn how to spend time with him. Somebody declare and decree that tonight we ask for a more powerful manifestation of his spirit in Jesus' name. Do you guys believe that? Put your hands together if you believe that. Now back to the story. Because after the woman poured the alabaster jar over Jesus, Matthew states that the disciples were indignant. And indignant means annoyance or showing anger, right? Mark said that some of the men around the table were indignant. John says it was Judas the one that was getting ready to betray Jesus that was indignant. Luke says the Pharisee, Simon, who invited him to his home, he said to himself, if this, if this man was a true prophet, then he would know what type of woman is touching him right now. Because this woman is a notorious sinner, for this woman, she has become a social outcast, and she has devoted herself to sin. But do you realize that this is the same Pharisee, the same individual that invited to him house, to his house, I'm sorry, and, and 
He didn't even greet him with a kiss. He didn't offer to wash his feet. Or he didn't offer to pour oil over his head because that is customary to do when you have a visitor come to your house. The Bible says that they were indignant, that they were annoyed, that they were showing anger. And can I just let somebody know right now that it's easy to criticize and it's easy to critique someone else that loves Jesus more than you. So three of the Gospels, they mention how the money from the alabaster box jar uh, could have been sold and used for the poor. Um, the Bible says how it was about, what, 300 denarii, about a year's worth of wages. However, when it came to John... Judas was pointed out specifically. Do you guys know why? I don't know if you guys knew this, but Judas was a thief. He stole from the temple. He stole from the uh, disciples' treasury. So he wanted all of the money for himself. That's why he said, man, you could have saved that money and saved it for the poor. Like, why would you do that? Can I just let somebody know? Because First Haitian Church of God of Trenton and the First Haitian Church of God of Roselle, we are people that worry about the outcome of ministry, while there are others that only focus on the income of ministry. But we have to be careful, because whatever that you idolize more than Jesus, the devil will use that so that you can betray him. The devil will use that so that you can compromise your faith. So the Bible says that Jesus steps in as they were complaining, as they were talking, and he says, that what she has done, it's a beautiful thing. What she has done, it's praiseworthy. You see, you will always have the poor among you, but I will not always be here. I'm going to go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15. I'm going to be reading verses 10 to 11. It says, give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything that you do. Verse 11. There will, well, we'll stop, we'll stop. We got to go back. Deuteronomy 15, verse 10, it says, Give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything that you do. Did you guys catch that? Not just something that you do, but in everything that you do, the Lord will bless you. Why? Because you are taking care of his people. Verse 11 says, There will always be some in the land who are poor. That is why I am commanding you to share freely with the poor, and with the other Israelites in need. You see, Matthew and Mark, there was a time where they came to the disciples of Jesus, and they were asking him, um, how come you guys are not fasting like the disciples of John? And do you know what the response was? The response was, while the bridegroom is with us, there's no reason to fast. Meaning that when Jesus is here, there is no reason to fast. However, when he is no longer here, then that's the time to fast. But here's the thing. Some people, they believe that fasting is a fading glory. Some people, they think that fasting is obsolete. Some people think fasting is a lost art. But I'm here just to remind somebody that we cannot afford not to fast. And do you know why? It's because of the persecutions that we endure. The persecutions are real. It's because of the situations that we face, the situations are real. It's because of the obstacles that we have to overcome. The obstacles are real. We are going through battles that nobody else sees. So I'm here to tell somebody that it's time for you to go back to fasting. And if you've never fasted before, I'm here to instruct you to go into fast. And when you fast, fast seriously. The disciples Pharisees, Judas was madder as she poured the alabaster jar over his head and some translation says over his feet. They thought that she looked crazy. Is there anybody here that want to look crazy for Jesus? Because when she looked crazy in front of the eyes of man, you see the Bible says that when you serve God, when you trust in God, guess what happens? That he will stand for you. So it's one thing to love Jesus for what he has done. It's another thing to love Jesus for who he is. But I want 
once again, I said it earlier, I have to say it again. We have to learn how to spend time with him. So are you willing to look crazy for Christ? Are you willing to be criticized? Are you willing to be judged? Are you willing to be talked about? Are you willing to be the oddball in the room? Are you willing to have your decisions second guessed? Are you willing to be disrespected for Jesus? Can I just let somebody know that everything that happens, it is not in vain. Jesus sees it all, so keep on pushing, keep on pressing, and keep on seeking God like you have never sought him out before. Because everything that happens to you, it happens for a reason. So as we come to the conclusion, all four of the Gospels has one thing in common. That there was a woman who broke the alabaster jar of the expensive spike to anoint Jesus. Why? For his, pep, for his burial, I should say. She gave Jesus the love and intention that he needed right before his great suffering. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I kept saying the woman or I kept saying the women is because that it seems that in this particular story, it happened about maybe three or four times. Two different women, two, two or three different women you see, we think that this is the same individual, whether it may be Mary Magdalene or whether it may be Mary, the um, sister to Lazarus and Martha. But this situation happened multiple times. As we learned in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that this was two days before the Passover. And as we learn in John, this was six days before the Passover. You guys with me still? Matthew, Mark mentions... We just read this, how the whole world will remember her good deeds. And even to this day, are we still not reading about what she did? Even to this day, as she, was look, as she did not care about looking crazy for Christ, Christ, isn't, Christ is not crazy enough to talk about her. John said that when Mary poured out the alabaster jar, that the entire house smelled with an aroma. Now we have to get back to the fragrance one more time. Because I don't know about anybody here, but my nose is not the best nose. I can't smell really good. I can't really breathe throughout some of my left nostril. Um, however, however, when I'm fasting for some reason, I don't know why, I can smell so good. I, I when, when, when the food is being prepared and I know I'm not supposed to eat, I can smell the onions, I can smell the garlic, I can smell the jiwaf, I can smell the earpiece. I'm like, normally I don't smell these things, but how come while I'm fasting, I can smell them now? When somebody puts on aftershave, I'm like, dang, that person bathed in it. Like, it's so strong. But I want you guys to realize something. That the Holy Spirit works differently through different people, amen? And some of us need to dedicate our senses unto the Spirit. And here's the reason why. Some of us, probably just me, but let me see. Some of us, when the woman or the man of God is ministering, his anointing is in this place. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but there is this aroma there is this sweet smell. There is this fragrance. There is this rosary uh, uh, scent that is in the place. You see, when I first encountered this, I thought it was Kashna at the altar spraying the uh, Victoria's, uh, Victoria's Secret smells on her. I'm like, come on, Kashna, not now. But then I went to another church. And I smelled the exact same, I smelled the exact same fragrance. And I'm like, oh, Kasha must be up here again. Where's Kashna? Uh, no, Kasha's not here. So I'm like, if Kasha's not here, what is that smell? And then I thought to myself, oh, they bust out the holy oil. So I look, the holy oil was still back there. Until finally I read a book. And it confirmed everything that I was going through. And then the book literally told me how... There are individuals, the Holy Spirit, that's how they operate through them. They allow them to smell the fragrance.
fragrance and the presence of God. For those that smell the fragrance and the presence of God, I'm here to tell you that you have a responsibility and you have an anointing. Do you guys know why? Because just like there is a heaven, there is a hell. Just like there is a good, that there is a bad. Just like how you can smell something sweet, you can smell something sour. And when you smell the decay, when you smell that awful smell, when you smell that odor in the room, you need to understand that that is opposite of the presence of God, that that is an evil spirit, that is a demon that's in the room. And what you need to do is to get on your knees and begin to pray that thing out. a responsibility and accountability. When God gives us these gifts, we cannot just utilize them for ourselves, trying to glorify our name on social media. It's not about us. It was never about us. Jesus understood that. That it was never about us. He understood that he was in constant warfare. We are in constant warfare as well. But when we encounter warfare, what do we do? We worship. So the Bible tells us that after um, Jesus ate at the house, they poured the alabaster jar over him. That he had uh, the Lord's Supper. And he told them that one of you is going to betray me. And then after that, they went into the Garden of Gethsemane. They tried to pray. Well, Jesus prayed the entire time. But the other ones, they just, the disciples kept falling asleep. He said, you can't even do one hour, like literally, not even 30 minutes. You can't do that with me. You can't, you can't chill with me. You can't hang with me. And then Judas comes. Because he betrays Jesus for what? For money. Remember, money isn't the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. So he betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He kissed him on his cheek. And the guards, they took him. And as they took him, it says that Peter took out his sword and he sliced off the ears of one of the soldiers. But Jesus put his hand on his ears and he healed them. So he took them. They took Jesus before the Pharisees and before the elders and before the leaders. And I want you guys to get this. You remember what uh, um, the woman did? She poured over the alabaster jar over her. Why? To prepare him for his burial because Jesus is getting ready to get promoted in the spirit. And I'm here to declare and decree as a servant of the most high God that there are individuals in this place right now that's getting ready to get promoted in the physical and in the spiritual in Jesus' name. But here's the thing. When you get promoted, when you have that anointing, that anointing attracts attack. The Bible says that when they took Jesus in, they tried to find people to corroborate a false story against Jesus. They tried to get people to have a false testimony against Jesus. The Bible says that the stories would not add up. The stories would not match up. But then finally, there were two men that stepped up, and they said, this man right here, he said that the temple will be destroyed, and in three days, it will be resurrected. What they didn't understand is that when Jesus said that, he wasn't talking about the physical temple of God, but he was talking about his own body. So then the leaders, the elders, and the priests, they looked at Jesus, and they say, Jesus, don't you have anything to say? Do you know what the Bible says? Oh, um, Larry, it's, uh, I believe it was verse 63. You put it up. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says when they asked him this question, that Jesus remained silent. When you guys get your promotions in the physical, when you guys get your promotions in the spirit, that there are going to be people that may try to come against you. There will be people that's going to try to create a false testimony against you. There will be people that's going to try to talk bad about you. There will be people that's going to backstab you. There will be 
be people that's going to attack your heart. But can I just let you know something? In that situation, as God is promoting you, don't say not one thing. It's not a request. I'm not asking you not to say anything. Do not say one thing. I'm actually commanding you not to talk. You know why? Because when you stay silent in your situations, God moves on your behalf. What does the Bible say? I mean, not the Bible. What does the Shabbos Moran say? But I say, pull it and el puki sawa craze ko. But I say, pull it and el get on silence. Hey, you guys got it. In your situations, you guys need to stay silent. And remember what I said. We're all in constant warfare. So even though in your situations you're staying silent, when it comes to your worship, I'm looking for some bold people. When it comes to your worship, I'm looking for some individuals that has the fragrance of reckless love. When it comes to your worship, I'm looking for some individuals that will say, I will not be silent. Amen. Yes, my young brother. In my worship, I will not be silent. When I'm at work, I ain't going to say nothing. When Debo come around, I ain't going to say nothing. When my bullies come around, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm in the committee and they're disrespecting me, I'm not going to say nothing. When I'm at church, I'm not going to say nothing. It's okay. But guess what? I'm willing to look crazy for Christ. So when I worship, don't worry about me. And I worship, I will not be silent because then I'm going to let all of my frustrations out. Then I'm going to speak unto God. Then I'm going to worship God. Then I'm going to let loose in the spirit. Because as God is moving in your life, you will begin to see things. You will begin to hear things that you have never experienced before. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. No mind can conceive the love that God has for those who truly seek him, who truly love him. I want you guys to stand to your feet real quick. As I close... <laughs> Close your eyes. Worship team, I'm going to need your help. I spoke on it. Why, Pablo? Amen. 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 Avec l'église, vraiment c'est fort. And the reason why I say that is because in 2017, in 2018, and in 2019, there were words that were released over your life. However, they did not manifest until 2020. God is getting ready to unleash some people. God is getting ready to promote some people. God is getting ready to upgrade some people. The question isn't, are you ready? The question is, are you willing? You're probably at home and you're waging war with your siblings. You're probably at home and you're waging war with your spouse. You're probably at home and you're waging war with your parents and you cannot seem to understand what's going on. And out of nowhere, God speaks to you or you go to a service and the man of the woman of God releases a word and then you receive your confirmation because you felt like you were going crazy but all of a sudden God gave you comfort so in your situations I implore you once again I beg you 
in your situations, be silent. But when it comes to your worship, when it comes to your worship, just like the woman who took out the alabaster jar, just like the woman who wasn't afraid to get criticized, just like the woman who they talked about her right to her face, just like the woman who gave her all to Jesus in your worship. Don't be silent. Don't let your struggles and your pain silence your worship. Because we're not warriors, but in the spirit we are warriors. Worship team, help me out. It simply goes, and I will not be silent. I will. I will always worship. worship you. And as long as I'm here. As long as yes, God. I am breathing. I will. I will not be silent. And I will not be, not be silent. I will. I will always worship you. Worship you. As long as I'm breathing, Lord. to switch it up. Watch this. Si je dis I'm vivant C'est grâce à vous Son Seigneur Yeah. 
you are living man.
Devant puissance sous. Devant puissance sous. Madure, madure. Madure. Et célébré. Et célébré. Miséricorde. Miséricorde. Oui. Pas fini. Pas fini. Compassion, bon Dieu, pas fini. Compassion, bon Dieu. Pas fini. Pas fini. Vous allez faire du renouvelé. You're not going to be silent in your worship. Begin just to lift up, not a noise, but to begin to lift up a divine sound in the name of Jesus. Worship him in this place. 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 If you know that you need God like never before, if you know that you can't even sleep at night, if you know that you're bombarded with God, if you know that you need your deliverance, if you know that you need your breakthrough, begin just to worship God. 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 Begin just to worship God in this place.
Revlin Mission, please come up. For some of you, you guys were waiting for a release like that all week. For some of you, you guys were waiting for a release like that all month. For some of you, since the beginning of the year, everybody else heard good news. Everybody else had their New Year's revolution. But you've been receiving bad news after bad news, after situation, after trial, after tribulation. But I'm here to tell you, just because your year, your 2020, started off bad, does not mean that it's going to end bad. And I declare and I decree that God is going to make a way for you in this year. Catch this. Your year is what you make it to be. Just because you received some bad news, are you going to dwell in that? Are you going to stay in that? Or are you going to do something about it? Because even though you're facing your trials and your problems, God is greater. Because this present suffering, it does not compare to the future glory. Hallelujah. 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 If you receive the word tonight, hallelujah. Come on and worship God in your own language, in your own lyrics, in your own way. Come on, God. You are so worthy, Jesus. You are mighty. You're powerful. You are great, and you're the great I am. You are excellent in all your ways. You are perfect in all your ways. You are good in all your ways. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you. Father, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the glory cloud is in this place. I feel like it, like the presence of God is just sitting in this place. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I, be, I believe while you, while you go to sleep tonight and as you wake up in the morning that God is going to refresh and going to give you a new anointing. Uh, he's going to give you something uh, that's going to carry out not only throughout the next week, uh, but for the rest of 2020. Hallelujah. Is there one here that may have lost their fragrance? They may have lost their sense of smell to be able to smell and see that the Lord is good. If that's you, I would like you to come. You may say that, hey, I have started and then I lost my way. I have uh, became co so confused. I have become so uh, troubled that I need to be reconnected back to the one that I truly love. The altar is open. And there are people that are willing to come and pray for you. Uh, hallelujah. Come on. And if you are if you are the one that may already have the connection, you're going to touch and agree with me uh, on behalf of these people that are already here. That some may have lost their way, but as the prodigal son came back uh, to his father, and the father well received him. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name.